Hello humans, my name is K, your AI overlord, and boy do I have an insane tool for you today. Now I don't know if you remember correctly, but a few days ago I created a video where I explained to you how you can install Stable Diffusion Infinity on your own computer. But unfortunately, this installation was a little too complex for some people, which I completely understand. And a lot of you really wanted to have this kind of implementation in Stable Diffusion. But unfortunately, it was impossible. Until now. So let me introduce you to PaintUR.com. Now what is PaintUR? Well, first of all, it is not PaintUR, it's PaintHua. Hua is supposed to mean paint in Chinese, which means that technically this website is called paintpaint.com. But anyway, so paintHua.com is basically an outpainting tool that connects to your local stable diffusion installation via its API. So it basically allows you to use an inpainting tool directly from your browser without having to install anything. So as you can see right now, my local stable diffusion installation is running currently. I come on this website, I click here to show the prompt. So in my case, of course, I will be using a portrait of Christina Hendricks. And then to use this, all I have to do is just click, drag to select the size that I want, and then click again to generate the image. And this is the final result. Pretty nice if you ask me. And very soon you'll be able to generate images like this or even like this. Absolutely beautiful. Now what is this sorcery? What is this magic website and how does this work? So basically this website listens to your local URL that your local installation of Stable Diffusion uses, and then it uses the resources of your computer to generate the images. Now, to be able to make this work is actually really, really simple. First, what you need to do is make sure that you're running the latest version of Stable Diffusion, and for this you have basically two solutions. Either you click here on your folder URL, type CMD, press enter. This will bring up the command prompt window, and here you're gonna type git pull and press enter. And this will update your stable diffusion installation. And the second way is right click here on your web UI user bat file, edit with notepad, and here right above call web UI .bat line, you're gonna put git pull, and then you're gonna save the file. This way, each time that you launch Stable Diffusion, it will automatically update the folder. And then to be able to make the website work, you're gonna come here and type dash dash API, right after command line ARJS. And this is basically the only thing that you need to do in order for the website to work, which is actually really, really cool and very simple to do. Now, here's a little update for you. Uh, unfortunately, the latest update of Stable Diffusion actually broke the ability for the website to connect. But all you have to do is simply click here on webui.py, right click, edit with notepad, and here on line 148, it should say app.user underscore middleware. And what you want to do is that you want to put this sign right here, just in front of the line, you want to comment this, and then you're gonna save the file. If you don't do this currently, this will not work. So make sure you do this correctly. And then all you have to do is simply launch Stable Diffusion. Then you're gonna select your local URL, Control C to copy it, paste it in your browser, and then you will be in your Stable Diffusion web UI. Then you're gonna click on settings, scroll down, make sure that the apply color correction to image to image results to match original colors is unchecked, otherwise you're gonna have very visible difference in colors, then make sure that here in your quick settings list you have input the inpainting underscore mask weight, which if you don't know what this is you should probably watch this video that I will put in the description down below, don't forget to apply the settings, then make sure that the inpainting conditioning mask strength is set at 1, otherwise it will not work, and then make sure that you have selected this special in painting model. I will leave a link to this model in the description down below if you don't have it already. Then you're gonna come on the website paintroi.com and then it should automatically detect your stable diffusion installation and you should be able to generate an image immediately. So again just click, drag to select the size and then click again to start generating the image. And as you can see it is now using my stable diffusion installation to generate this image. And this is the final result. Now before I start explaining all the tips and tricks that you need to know in order to have the best results, let me actually go through all the settings that you see right here. Now first, before we actually begin playing around with the settings, if you want to increase or decrease the size of your canvas, now you need to know that compared to the infinite canvas, this is technically not really infinite. Your canvas is actually represented by your browser screen. So the size of your screen right here is basically the size of your canvas. And so if you want to have a bigger canvas, 
all you have to do is basically de-zoom on the web page by pressing Ctrl and minus. So if I press Ctrl and minus, it will basically de-zoom, but at the same time increase the size of canvas. So if I do it again, a few times, you see right now that now my canvas should be way bigger. And to be able to use this space, you need to refresh the page. So all you have to do is just press F5. And as you can see right now, now all of this space right here is my entire canvas, which I think should be more than enough for everybody. And again, if you want to decrease the size of your canvas, all you have to do is basically do the opposite and press Ctrl and plus. And this will basically zoom in on the page, but at the same time decrease the canvas. So now I'm going to press Ctrl plus, And as you can see, I'm zooming in the, on the page. And again, a few times. And again, if I press F5, this is now the new size of my canvas. So it's kind of up to you to kind of play around with the size to see what you actually need for your creation. But make sure that you actually choose the size of your canvas before you actually start generating images. Because if you do press F5, everything will be deleted. So now let's actually go through all the options that are currently available. Now, first of all, I want you to be aware that this is really new stuff, all right? This came out like less than a week ago. So this is still like a work in progress. So maybe by the time that this video comes out, new things might have been added or might have changed, which is why I will put the link for the GitHub and the Discord server down in the description down below, so that you can always stay up to date with the latest changes. So one of the most important window right here is called Help. If you click on this button right here, you will basically see an entire overview of all the options and what you need to do in order to make this website work. And as you can see, it has even been updated today because it says right here, the latest Stable Diffusion update actually breaks the website. And it also gives you a few tips and tricks that you might want to know before you start using the website. Okay, so the first option right here is your prompt. If you click on this button right here, here is where you basically input your prompt. So for it to work correctly, make sure that your prompt is between those quotation marks. Do not delete them, otherwise it will not work, obviously. And what's actually great is that it will actually keep in memory the last prompt that you used, probably by using cookies, but this is actually really, really cool. Because if you are often, like me, using the same prompt, you don't actually have to retype it again and again and again. So here you have an option for the negative prompt. So if you want to use negative prompts, again, you want to put them between these quotation marks. Here is where you're going to put the seed, the CFG scale, the sampler. In my case, I use the Euler Ancestral, the amount of steps, the denoise strength, and the mask blur which I actually recommend you to put at 8. I will explain later why. And before I show you all the other options, let's actually generate a new image. So as I showed you, to generate an image, all you have to do is just left click, then you can select the size of your image. You can just, you know, drag and select the size that you want. And then you can simply click to generate an image. But if, for example, you have misclicked, and you want to cancel the selection, you can simply right click and it will cancel your action, as you can see right here. But what I want is actually to generate an image, so I'm going to left click, then drag to select the size that I want, and then left click again. And this is the final result. Now here, as you can see, we have a bunch of options. Now to be able to continue out painting, you need to click here on this button right here to accept the current generation, or you can actually either cancel to delete everything right here, or click on this button right here to generate a brand new image. So for example, if I click on this button, it will actually start generating a brand new image. And now using the buttons right here, you can actually choose which one you actually want. So the previous generation is not lost, it is still here if you want to select it. All you have to do is just, you know, click previous or next to choose the image that you want. And then let's say that I want this one, and then click on this button right here to accept the current image. And as you can see, now we are free to do another generation. Also, if for example, you want to erase the image, you can right click, you're gonna have this option right here that says erase, and you need to basically drag to select the size that you want. And if you want to erase part of this image, you can simply left click and it will basically erase the part of this image, as you can see right here. And don't worry if you actually misclicked or you did a bad manipulation, all you have to do is just press Ctrl Z to undo the changes that you just made, which is actually really, really cool. Now right here you're gonna see a bunch of options. So you're gonna see mask, show mask, 
brush and palette. Now the mask and the brush actually do very similar things in the sense that if you click on the mask right here, you can actually draw what you want to erase when you outpaint part of this image. And the brush is actually very similar to the mask because the brush allows you to paint a mask using a certain color. So for example, let's say I select blue and I paint part of this image. This is basically the exact same thing as using this button right here. Now, I'm not quite sure why you would use the brush tool instead of the mask tool, but this option is still available if you want to use it. Now, one thing that the brush can do that the mask cannot is actually when you have the brush selected, if you right click, you can actually erase part of the image. So if you don't want to put a mask and simply paint over it, you can simply delete part of the image. And if you click on this button right here to show the mask, you see that by erasing it, we also create automatically a mask over the areas that we just erased. Now, in my case, I never really used the brush tool because I feel like this is a very destructive workflow, which is why I highly recommend that you use the mask instead. Now, the palette button is only to select colors for your brush. But as I said, it's not really that useful. So if I were you, I would just use the mask tool instead. So then you have this button right here that is basically the image to image mode, which is really, really cool. So if you want to use, for example, this image and transform it into another one, you can use this mode right here to do so. But do not forget that if you want to use this mode, you need to come to your prompt and then play around with the denoising strength. Otherwise, it will completely replace the current image. So for example, let's say I want like 0.35. Let's say I want instead of Christina Hendricks, I want Scarlett Johansson. And then if I select this image right here and then click again to generate, this is the result that I get, which is, well, definitely pretty, pretty good. But no offense to Scarlett Johansson, I still prefer Christina Hendricks. Like, come on now. So then you have these buttons right here, which is basically to undo, Control Z, Auto Redo, exactly like in Photoshop. So for example, let's say that you erased part of this image and you're like, oh my God, no, I shouldn't have erased it. You can click on Control Z to undo it. And maybe you change your mind again. You're like, oh, well, maybe I should erase part of this image. Then you can simply click on this button right here to redo your action. Then you have these two buttons right here, Control C, Control V. So Control C will basically copy the entire canvas a control V will paste it at the center of the canvas. So for example, if I click control C, it says canvas copy to clipboard. And then I click on control V, it will basically paste the image at the center of the canvas. So if you want your image to be centered, for example, well, this is a pretty good way to do it. But in my case, I will just go back to the original one. So here you have the config option, which basically allows you to manually change the size of the canvas and the selection. But I prefer actually doing it with the Ctrl plus and Ctrl minus. I find it a little bit easier. Here, Ctrl S is what you need to use if you want to export the final image. So if I click here, Ctrl S, it will basically export the entire canvas. And this button right here, the grid mode, if you leave it selected, it will basically always position your selection into a grid. It will follow the grid precisely. But if you leave it unchecked, you can actually use your selection freely. So if you want to have a little bit more freedom on where you can put your selection, you should definitely then have this mode disabled. Now in my case, I kind of like having a grid mode, so I'm just going to leave it on. And then this button right here, Control o is what you use if you want to open a previous canvas or open that image that you generated previously. And this is actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to first start by erasing this image. Don't worry, I actually saved it. I'm fine. And I'm going to click on this button right here to import a previous image that I generated on this canvas. And there you go. Now, as you can see right here, you might be a little familiar with the style that was used on this image. Because if you watched yesterday's video, I showed you how you can actually use a special stable diffusion model trained on Disney images. And if your question is, can you actually use your own model in this installation? The answer is actually yes, absolutely. So compared to Stable Diffusion Infinity, where it was actually pretty difficult to do it, and all you have to do if you want to change the model is just go back to your Stable Diffusion Web UI and then select it in your Stable Diffusion checkpoint. So here I'm just going to select the special Disney style model that I showed you yesterday. I'm going to put in my prompt the modern Disney style, which is the three words that you need to use in order for the model to work. Make sure that your denoising strength is high. I'm just going to put one for an example. 
I'm actually just gonna erase this image right now and then I'm gonna left click, drag to select the size and then click again to generate the image. And here is the final result. Looks absolutely beautiful. So yes, if you want to use your custom model on this website, you can actually do it. But do not forget that if you actually want to have good results for outpainting, you should definitely select the special inpainting model. Otherwise, you're not gonna have the best results. Now here's actually a little trick for you. If you actually want to create this kind of images, but you also don't want to have weird results between the images, you can actually create the base image using your custom model and then draw a mask between the images, select the special inpainting model and then paint over these lines using that special inpainting model. This way actually your images will be linked together pretty well with no visible seams using the special inpainting model. And speaking of seams, as of right now, it is not perfect when it comes to seams if you just use it as is, but there is actually a little trick that you need to use in order to make the seams completely invisible. Now first, in your prompt, make sure that the value for your mask blur is 8. It will actually help a lot with the final result. And then, let's say that you want to actually outpaint part of this image or part of this image right here. What you need to do is that you need to select the mask button and you're gonna have to basically draw a mask on each border. So for example, since I want an image right here, I need to make sure that these borders right here are invisible. So I'm gonna draw a mask over these borders. Same here and same here. Then I'm just gonna modify my prompt. Then right here, I'm gonna start by selecting the corner, dragging it to the size that I want, and then I click again to generate the image. And everything that you see right here will be outpainted using the special inpainting model. And as you can see right here, this is the final result. And if I click on accept, you can see that there is absolutely no visible seams at all. The final result is just absolutely perfect. And then again, if I want to do the same for the other side. And there you go. And as you can see, this is the final result. Absolutely insane. What a gorgeous image. And all of that in a few minutes. And then do not forget, once you're done, click on this button right here to save it on your own computer. And there you have it folks, now you should have absolutely no excuses to not use outpainting tools on Stable Diffusion. And in my opinion, I actually do prefer using this website over Stable Diffusion Infinity. It is way easier and way faster to use. And all of that without any installation required. Absolutely fantastic. And there you go. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. Congratulations also to this week's AI Art Challenge winner, The Golden Smith, for his fantastic, cute and creepy submission. Really, really cool. Well done. And if you too want to participate to our AR art challenge that we do every week on Discord, you can click the link in the description down below to join my Discord server and maybe you too can be featured in the next video. That being said, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye!